That's all my transfer case fluid. I was driving all of a sudden, clunk, 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 clunk. So I'm pretty sure the drive shaft popped out. That looks bad, doesn't it? Does that have a big crack in the case? Getting this onto this trailer was so hard. It suddenly starts downpouring. What the hell? Bearing for memento. <laughs> there was a mouse attack. I might have to get it towed and then come back to get it with a flat deck. This has been the most cursed trip. All right, guys, I just got to the dirt. I've been driving for three days straight to get to Phoenix, Arizona. Rob has sent me a GPS coordinates for where he's camped. It's like 1030 at night. So I'm just going to make my way into the middle of nowhere looking for Rob and camp. And then we're going to start it on this adventure in the morning. So first, let's see if we can find him. Exploring at night is always a bit more of an adventure, especially when it comes to unfamiliar terrain. Luckily, the Trail Destroyer has been outfitted extensively with off-road lighting for just these types of situations. Arizona is completely new terrain for me to wheel. Part of me wishes I could see a bit more of what's around me right now, but it'll be exciting to see where I am when I wake up in the morning also, and I love exploring new places. for like an hour trying to find Rob. This place is like a maze. The wind was ripping that night, but it was also warm like a hot summer night so it was comfortable. All right, it's super windy. I don't know if you guys can hear me with all this wind. Rob's already asleep. I'm gonna get in the tent. Catch you guys in the morning. here in, uh, I don't know, somewhere north of Phoenix, Arizona. Morning, Rob. Morning. How you doing? I'm tired. How about you? I'm pretty good. Yeah. You sleep good? No. No? I'm tired. <laughs> the wind was uh, something, right? <laughs> yeah. Wind set, and now bugs. Yeah, the but bugs are kind of fun. Still a beautiful area. Like, look at this. A cacti. Pretty, pretty windy still. Hopefully we can hear what you're saying. Yeah. With this fancy new microphone. Hopefully. I had to spend a bit of time this morning reorganizing my gear because my truck was a disaster. And I know, this probably doesn't look organized, but for me, it is. I got three jerry cans of fuel because we're doing a 430 kilometer trip. I don't know what that is, a mile. Sorry, tools, recovery gear, sleeping bag, power station. Let's do this thing. And basically our goal is to make it to Flagstaff in two days or two and a half days. For Overland uh, Expo. For Overland Expo West, yeah. So we're heading kind of that way up over the mountains. Uh, and then we're going to do something called... <coughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Maybe we should try that again, but without the sneeze and... <laughs> no, the sneeze is staying in. All these cactuses. Cacti. Crazy. 
I'm not sure if I've ever seen a cactus in person before, so I was a little bit excited about it. They were everywhere. so far on this trail. All the cacti. Never seen that before. Grows pretty rough. Oh. Oh, a cool big striped salamander thing. What'd you see? That was an enormous lizard. Like red and black. A red and black lizard? Yeah. It's like striped. And it's gone. There's all sorts of crazy wildlife out here in Arizona. I'm sure we'll see some more. Rob told me he's seen tarantulas out here climbing up and down the road. Yeah. I'd seen like two by the time I got here last time. Cool. Maybe it's the wrong time of year, but that might be. There you go. What? Stick your finger in that hole. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it. Why would you do that? Why, Rob? Why would you do that? I'm out. <laughs> Super cool scenery on this road. It is, I love it. What's our goal for today? Like, do we have any destination in mind? Or are we just going as far as we can go? I think we'll just go as far as we can go. Uh, I don't, I've never actually been the way we're going, so I have no idea what it's gonna be like other than this one little section we're on now. So apparently what we saw is a Gila monster. I was correct. Uh, they are venomous. Oh, well, I'm glad we went looking for it then. like a really bad idea to me. Apparently it was a rattlesnake. I didn't know what it was until it rattled at me and scared the crap out of me. Um, and then it coiled up and that's when I decided to leave. Uh, yeah, well, don't throw rocks at the rattlesnakes, Rob. This trail seemed to climb up and up forever, and as we got higher, the view kept getting cooler. When we crested the top, we could see a beautiful lake in the distance, and it looked like maybe we could get down to it. If we can, it's probably the best place to stop for lunch and cool down a bit from the heat. Like it's locked. It does appear to be locked. Yeah, and no trespassing. I thought it'd be cool to go in and take. All a look. personnel should have electromagnetic energy awareness training. Do you have your 
Electromagnetic energy awareness training. Uh, with let you. me check my certificates. I see a... I don't think I've got it with me. I see a way in. <laughs> yeah. does not look like we can enter here, other than the very obvious way that we could enter, but... We're not supposed to, so... We shall not! It is hot out here in Arizona. Hot. What was this for? This is all, uh, so they use microwaves to communicate. I guess it was before, like, the time of fiber optics. So I think this is a relay station. There's like really? a, yeah, there'll be another microwave station somewhere else that'll send the signals over here, and then this will send it somewhere else. Gotcha. So you can get the signals across the mountain from, like, Phoenix to whatever in the distance. Cool. We're going to stop and go into low. Got that engaging for low. The microwave tower was a little bit dull, so onward to the lake. I think I just ran over a snake. I think you did, yeah. That is the Theodore Roosevelt Lake. Must be an important guy. Got all sorts of stuff named after him. Wasn't he the guy who invented Disney? No, that's Elon Musk. Uh... I'm convinced these little lizards are baby dinosaurs. They just take millions of years to get big. I, I think you're onto something. The road down to the lake was almost as long as the road up to the top of the mountain, and we made our way down through the twists and turns until we found a route that looked like it went out onto the pavement and then down to the lake. But quickly after we hit pavement, disaster. You want us to pull you out the road? I gotta roll slowly forward. Okay. Look underneath. Oh, fluid too. Oh yeah, I see it. Yeah, it's probably a transfer case. Because oh, yeah. the the drive shaft. Oh well, that's better than a diff. Oh, it still sucks. It's all under my skid blades too. Yeah, I think my drive shaft popped out from the transfer case end. But I can see. Well, it might be fluid running down the shaft. That's all my transfer case fluid. Oh, shoot. I was driving all of a sudden, clunk, 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 clunk. So I'm pretty sure the drive shaft popped out. I'm gonna move forward a little bit. Can you look under this side? Yeah. And just tell me if the drive shaft looks like it's not connected. Okay. I'm four, so why, so my drive shaft shouldn't be anything. spinning, right? So. It's okay. Oh, yeah, we're fine. We, we're gonna figure it out. We're not sure what's going on, but we'll figure it out. Okay. Thank you. I'll, uh, I'll get you to take a look underneath as I drive forward and tell me what's going on. Okay. Not going to happen out here. At least we're on the road. Yeah. It's moving, yeah. Front side's moving. I'm gonna wiggle it with my hand. It's hot. Can't see anything because of the damn yeah. skid plates. You got oil everywhere. Honestly, I don't think it matters what it is because I think the trip's over. This is not gonna be a quick, easy fix. Yeah. Well, I can call Christian. Well, I can. Uh, if you want to. Rent a trailer, I can pull you. It'll be a lot cheaper. Yeah. I think I think that's the end of the trip. Yeah, there's no way I need to be able to fix this out here in this heat. Yeah. But we can uh, I can take you over. Have to tow to Flagstaff. Flagstaff. Ah! If you get in, this is just flopping around there. I think maybe the U joint broke. Yeah, the dry shaft's just flopping around, and I wonder if it took out the linkage. Probably flopping around, it took out the linkage. So it's probably just a 
why did it start leaking fluid everywhere? I don't know. It could just be a broken U-joint. With the fluid? I don't know what's going on with the fluid. Because yeah, the shifter's probably just the, 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 the dry shaft flipping around probably took out the linkage for the shifter. Yeah. But I don't know why it's spewing fluid. Unless the drive shaft also wrecks something else. Ah! Oh. <laughs> I'm like 2,500 miles from home. Oh man, yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Well. Okay. Let me get on your Starlink. That looks bad, doesn't it? Is that a big crack in the case? Someone really good with AB Weld, they could like fill the crack so you can put fluid in it to drive it to wheel drive. But you need a Rubicon transfer case and a front drive cap for bear. Huh. Well, that's fun. And you have to have somebody smart enough to be able to transfer the AMW adapter onto the new transfer case. Oh. I don't know anyone smart. I don't know anyone smart either. Uh -huh. Yeah. I'll make an Instagram post, see what I can find. Transportation should run you under two grand for a case. Um, you just gotta throw all over the place. You just gotta find it locally or in a junkyard or something out there. But uh, that would be the cheaper than a tow bill. <laughs> yeah, well, and I'm gonna find it. I gotta find a shop that can do the work as well. That's true. So, okay, well, I think we're going to start by, by finding a trailer to tow this back to town, and then we'll figure it out from there. So, I need a new transfer case, and a drive shaft repair, and a four-wheel drive shop that can transfer the special America's Most Wanted adapter that's in my transfer case into a new transfer case. Oh. And I need the transfer case, oh, which is going to be like two grand or so. Sure, you don't want to buy a flatbed and tow it back to Canada. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I've made a post on Instagram. I've got some friends looking into a few things. Christian's making some calls. I've got uh, Matt and Kara from Ozark Overland Adventures hooking me up with one of their friends down here who knows pe know people who have a shop, so they might be able to help. So hopefully, we can get this figured out. I think, unfortunately, this trip is done because I'm gonna have to get this fixed now and then uh, make it to Expo. But we'll see what happens here. I. I'll keep filming as long as stuff is uh, going on. So let's we'll see how it goes. So we've been out here on the side of the road for a couple of hours. Made a post on Instagram, got a lot of great suggestions from a lot of you guys. Uh, so we're trying to get this thing over to Summit 4x4 in Prescott, Arizona. Right now we're just struggling to find a flat deck trailer to put it on to get it there. And they're gonna fix the case up and get her all ready to go. So they got parts coming in a couple of days. Rob's trying to find a flat deck. Okay, yeah, uh, we can be there in an hour and a half. Got one, yeah. Eight, uh, eight feet wide, 20 feet long. 20 feet long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, we're sorted. We need to go. They close uh, at five. So I just gotta put some stuff in your truck. All right. We got a flat deck. So we gotta go get it, come back, load this up. Then we gotta drive to Summit 4 i 4 in Prescott and then figure out what we're even doing after that, because now we don't have a trip to do for the next couple of days. You never need to check again. <laughs> Sorry for the smell. Oh my god. <laughs> well, I'm in. Okay, let's do this. All right, so I'm currently sitting on a pillow in the back of Rob's Tundra on his seat to leave, because he doesn't have a rear seat. We're driving in an hour and a half to rent a flat deck an hour and a half back, loading up the trail destroyer onto the flat deck. We've made it back with a flat deck that we rented. We discovered that the flat deck we rented was missing one of the ramps, and it was actually only seven feet wide instead of the eight feet wide that we were told it was. Hold up, hold up. I'm gonna have to get you really close on that side because you're hitting the wall on this side. I don't. Yeah, that's what I was worried about. This is eight feet wide, but your truck's seven feet wide. But 
I also got, I'm gonna have to move the chains and everything. Okay. Because you it like you're touching both sides basically. Was I was I getting up on this side? I don't know. I was too busy not falling over. <laughs> So we decided to improvise and use Rod's spare as a ramp. Getting onto this trailer that wasn't wide enough in two wheel drive took more attempts than I'm gonna bore you with. Getting yeah, this awesome. onto this trailer was so hard. <laughs> it is like right up against the tires. I can't believe I even got it on there. But we did it. Thank God, eh? It would have been a nightmare. If it would have been such a that. nightmare if this didn't work. I don't know what we'd do. I don't know either, but we made it work. So... Yeah, and it's pretty well balanced. The, All right, let's get it strapped down. Yeah, the back of the truck's squatting just a little bit, so we're we're good. All right, I think we got her all strapped down. We chained it on the front and rear, axle tubes to the sides. So that's what they had. So uh, we'll just have to give her a go and see uh, see what she does. I just inhaled a bug. I think that's good luck. Is it? I don't know, I just we made that up. That. <laughs> All right, it's the next day. We're on our way to Summit 4x4 in Prescott. It is hot out. Sick Overland trailer. By the way, guys, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, we're trying to get to, I don't know, maybe 300,000 subscribers by the end of the year. That'd be cool. Around 60% of people watching are not subscribed to the channel. Would really appreciate it if you hit that button, if you're watching the channel. Right, Rob? Right, yes. Whoop, whoop, where's Rob? Yep. Right, Rob? Uh, yes, right. Subscribe to the channel. Nice overland trailer, bro. This is the first time since the channel started that I've ever had a catastrophic breakdown while on a trip. But just you wait, there's more bad things to come before I get home. Suddenly starts downpouring as we're driving here, and the whole highway is turning into like a floodplain. Not see much behind. I'd love to help you unload this thing, man. So, all right, well, uh, yeah, as you can see, it barely fit. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, huh? Definitely looks fixable, man. That's what I like to hear. Yeah, for sure. Good and puncture through the floorboard, so that's good. You don't yeah. have to worry about that. So 
We'll get the case uh, put on there, the drive shaft, and uh, give it just a good once over and Perfect. get you back on the road, man. Appreciate um, it. You know, for me, the biggest thing is once we get the parts in here, you know, we'll verify parts are the correct ones that they send from the dealer, yeah. right? Um, and then we'll get that thing taken apart. I don't imagine that we're probably looking just a couple hours. Oh, okay. You know I mean? Awesome. I don't think it's going to be a big deal at all as long as there's no unexpected inside there once we get in there and split that case. And we'll get the drive shaft out today, get it to the drive shaft shop at uh, Chino Valley Miles and... Uh, so Get potentially she might be uh, ready to go to Expo on Friday? Absolutely. Sweet. Yep. Don't see any reason why not, man. Awesome. So I'll get you guys back on the road, and then we'll be hanging out with you this weekend. Right on. So. Appreciate it. Sweet. You betcha, man. Right there, yep. <laughs> See would be where the uh, probably where the drive shaft hit it. See it's cracked all here, all here. That's why all the fluid leaked out. Spacer out of there. Got it. Okay. So what we're gonna end up having to do here? Just gonna put this brand new front cover on the front of the case. So the internals stay in the back half of the case. So not too bad. Bearing for Memento. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's the bearings off. Yeah. Yeah. Right. There's our keeper. So is the keeper in that, that one? That should be, and we'll check that here in a minute. Okay. okay. That's on there, but. It's amazing how a bad situation can quickly turn around into a great situation. I broke my transfer case and had to change my plans drastically, spend a bunch of money I hadn't planned on, but I also got to make a bunch of new friends by coming out to Summit 4x4 and hanging out while they fixed it. The 4x4 community is really awesome, and I can't thank everyone who helped me out in this situation enough. All right, it's late, it's like nine o'clock or so. Uh, we just got everything all back together. The guys here at Summit 4x4 stayed late and got everything back together so that I can make it to Overland Expo tomorrow. Good thank you, thank you, all you guys for your help. I appreciate it. You guys are awesome. And you know, get some, get some rest. You deserve it. Now everybody go to bed. Five in the morning. And then we get to wake up and do it all over again tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. That's all right. That's the fun part. All right, I'm gonna head to. Where am I going? Uh, Flagstaff. Yeah. Make sure you guys come see the guys here at Summit 4x4 if you're in Prescott, Arizona, or Arizona somewhere. Great shop. Great people. And they fixed my Jeep, so now I can drive. Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm rolling up to Overland Expo West. We're going to be a display vehicle for Go Fast Campers this year. So we get to drive right into the show, which is cool. So uh, just waiting in line to do that right now. All right, guys, we're here at Overland Expo West. There's a thunderstorm. The ground is literally flooded. We are trapped in the Go Fast Campers booth right now. It's complete madness. What do you think, Rob? It's a little moist. You having fun? I'm having a blast. It only started raining when you got here. It is. Probably my fault. Yeah. Next, we're going to start by the way in a second. Wait for it. Nobody is happy right now. Look at this. Babies are crying. What the hell? Rob and I are trying to get somewhere up here. It's gotten pretty windy out. We're stopping up gas. It's it's losing, losing daylight too. There is a storm coming in, so I don't know how this is gonna go, but we're gonna find out. Let's get going while we still got light, eh? So what I'm saying is I think uh, I think we should just camp up. There's like a little pullover further up here, not very far. I think we should just camp there. Well, we were going to try and get up on top of the viewpoint to camp tonight, 
but with the lightning storm going on, we're thinking getting on top of a cliff, not the best idea. It's also getting late, it's dark, not super great for filming anyway. So we've uh, found a nice spot to, I mean a decent spot to just set up for the night. We're gonna continue on in the morning. So I got this at Overland Expo. This is called the Sport Keg. And what's cool about this is the guy who came up with it, it's, I mean, it's basically just a mini keg, but he came up with it in, so, in different sizes so that it fits inside your fridge in your truck. And the idea is to help eliminate beer cans that are all over campsites and, and that kind of pollution. And the motivation to do that is also, one, this is inexpensive, and to fill it up with beer at a local brewery is super cheap. We filled this up for 15 bucks and it's like five liters of beer. It has a little tap so we can pour our beer, a little CO2 cartridge. I think I've put it all together correctly. So we're gonna pour some beer. No beer. What have we done wrong? This that did is on seem a, very loose. Did seem very loose, right? Okay, that seems That's better. That's more like I wonder it. if this one. Oh. oh, yeah. Okay, there we go. Now they're on properly. It's, it's all foam. <laughs> so we're going to have to just let these settle a bit, I guess. There's a lot of spiders. Oh yeah. Are we on a spider nest or Coming something? out because of the light. Morning guys. Bit of a weird night last night. There was some drama. This has been like the cursed, the most cursed trip I think I've ever been on. The truck broke down, we barely made it to Overland Expo. And last night there was a mouse attack. There Rob, was, yeah. What happened Rob? This, this little guy. At three in the morning, started screaming at the top of his lungs like like he's never screamed before. Uh, went over, picked him up, was trying to calm him down. He would not. I noticed he's bleeding on his hand. Uh, look over his bed. There's a little mouse sitting on his bed, and it has uh, bitten his hand several places. Oh, like his little marks, especially that one there, which uh, he didn't want me holding his hand like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, we took a really long time to get him settled down, and this morning. Uh, one of them is looking a little worse. We did treat it. We got a little first aid kit, a little uh, myomatic kit in the back of the truck. So we put some of those like antiseptic wipes on it, uh, antibiotic cream. But it's looking worse, so we're going to take him get it checked out. That seems like so, the safe move. I think so. But it doesn't mean it's the end of the trip for us. Again. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately. <laughs> it's just it hasn't been our trip, has it? Nope. So Rob's going to take his son to go get checked out, which I think is the smart move. You never know. So uh, I'm going to have to carry on on my own, but if it is not over, I've got adventuring to do, even if it's by myself. So let's go. After a lot of misfortune, I was excited to finally be exploring Arizona. Following the track that Rob sent me in Onyx, I headed out solo into the desert. kind of heading downhill into this valley i'm wondering if maybe it's like a like a canyon that goes deep into the ground instead of driving up onto a mountain which would be a little bit different but it's pretty scenic through here so we're gonna find out soon It wasn't too long on this road before the scenery got absolutely crazy, and I realized I was on the edge of the Colorado River, aka the Grand Canyon. 
video does not do the scale of this justice. I don't think this is technically the Grand Canyon, but uh, pretty close. It is super, super hot out here, so I'm not gonna stay here. I'm gonna keep exploring and uh, see where we end up for camp tonight. I continued following the route that Rob sent me. Arizona is really unique in terms of landscaped. It's like desert, but there's a lot of green as well, which is really pleasant. And out here, I really did feel quite alone. So I'm following in like an alternate route. It's supposed to go to the same destination, but it's a bit more remote, more off-road. And it's turned out to be pretty fun and pretty scenic so far. So I don't think we're too far from this point that uh, that Rob gave me that he said is an awesome camp spot. So we're gonna follow this road. We should be there soon. Check us out. It's, it's beautiful. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but when I explore somewhere new and I see things that I've never seen before, beautiful, almost impossible looking landscapes that don't seem possible, it really touches my soul like nothing else.
Well, I was planning on camping up here, but this storm that I've been keeping an eye on has moved in. I don't like camping on top of mountains in a metal truck when there's a lightning storm. So I'm just gonna keep going, following this trail and see if I can find somewhere else to camp that's a little lower down and maybe out of the weather. I drove uh, up into Utah a little bit. I found myself this nice little riverside camp spot. It is in a bit of a wash, but uh, I don't think there's gonna be any immediate flooding, so I'm not too concerned about it. Beautiful spot. Let me get set up. All right, so I'm on my way back home. Summer on the side of the interstate in Idaho, about 10 hours still away from home. Transmission, I guess, is having some kind of issue. I was getting a grinding noise when I was driving at higher speeds. Couldn't find any any problem. Everything seemed fine. And then uh, all of a sudden I just uh, lost all my gears and now I can't drive. So I'm stuck on the side of the road again for the second time on this trip. This trip has been absolutely cursed. So I just sent the, uh, the engine codes over to Christian at Epic. So yeah, I'm just gonna wait for Christian to get back to me and I'll uh, figure out what to do. I might have to get it towed and then come back to get it with a flat deck, which sucks because it's 10 hours each way, but you know, gotta do what I gotta do. So, all right. The adventure continues. Look who it is. Wow. Well, you know, I was just uh, running some errands and I saw this uh, huge rig on the side of the road. So you guys can go ahead and say hi. Yeah, thanks, man. <laughs> going to tow it to Will's house because it's going to be thousands of dollars to tow it to Canada and as much as I don't want to go through the whole process of coming back to get it uh, I think that's the right thing to do. So we're now at Venture to Rome HQ where we're dumping the trail destroyer. This is the first time I've ever had a gladiator delivered to my driveway. Yeah. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. Hammy, baby. 600 yeah. horsepower. Love it. It's pretty dude. crazy. It's a lot of fun. That's why you, when it runs. That's why you got to take it to Canada to get fixed, though. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I got to take it back to the shop. All right, yeah. So. I love your. See you guys. All right, dude. Thanks. So I left the trail destroyer at Will's house and did the only thing I could do. I got on an airplane back home. What the heck am I going to do now? All right, back in Canada, first thing we had to do, figure out what we're gonna do with the Trail Destroyer. So of course I came to the coolest dealership on the planet, White Rock Dodge, and they're getting everything taken care of for us. So we're gonna bring it in, get it diagnosed, figure out what's going on. The main issue is getting the truck from Will's house in Idaho to here at the dealership so we can get it sorted out. If you buy one of these turnkey Hemi V8 Gladiators or Wranglers, you can come here, get a Jeep, get it built, and get it all wrapped in with your financing with the vehicle which is pretty sweet. These guys are the best, seriously. How are we gonna get the truck back here from Idaho? I called up Rich, the general manager of White Rock Dodge, good friend of mine, and he said, no problem. Hook me up with this trailer, their delivery trailer and a truck so that we can go down to Idaho, pick it up and bring it back. So let's do it. The White Rock Dodge trailer even has the Storytel Now logo on it. 
<laughs> That's so awesome. All right, let's go get the trail to start. All right, we're in Seattle. We've got the truck and trailer. We're on our way to meet the tow company. It's bringing the trail destroyer from Idaho in about 20 minutes. And then we're gonna transfer it over to this truck, haul it on back to White Rock Dodge. Hopefully get it fixed and back on the road real quick. All right, guys, we got the Trail Destroyer home. We got it over to White Rock Dodge. They're diagnosing it, and they're going to send it over to the guys at Epic, and they're going to repair whatever it is that needs to be repaired. We should be back on the road in no time. Huge thanks to those guys for just taking care of everything, making sure that I'm not going to be down for that long. I also want to give a huge shout-out to a couple of my Patreon members, Ed and Sarah, Lehman Upfit. Thank you so much. They arranged for having the truck shipped from Idaho to Seattle for me so that I wouldn't have to drive 10 hours to pick it up. I only had to drive three which was amazing. Thank you so much, guys. Appreciate you so much. All right, that's about it. We're heading out. I'm getting packed up, taking the Bronco out this weekend. I'll see you back next week for that video. Everybody been fake, all I see in the eyes. Six million ways to die. So I spit into this truth when I break the lies. Everybody wanna talk, but all I hear is lies. Everybody been fake, all I see in the eyes.